Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is by Brain Games. They do Ice Cool and Ice Cool 2, but they've done something new and interesting, and that one is called Pyramid of the Penguin. In the game Pyramid of the Penguin is for two to five players, it takes about 25 minutes to play, and it's for ages, oh, I'd say probably about eight or nine and up. And in the game, you're basically going to be playing, utilizing the box, as well as a stand-up in the middle of the box. It kind of reminds me of Battleship, and the way it's going to work is one player is going to play as the Peng Queen and the other players will play as explorers trying to delve into the temple to acquire its treasures. If any of the players are able to acquire the treasures that player player is going to win, provided that the entire team of players is not captured by the mighty Peng Queen, which is this little guy here. It uses magnets on a board and you're going to have a little bit of a hidden movement aspect as well as a competitive slash cooperative aspect between the players attempting to get the treasures. What One side is going to win and only one player on one side can win for the investigators or explorers. Let's go ahead and check out the game and all the components and then I'll tell you how to play it. So here we have the ice cool pyramid of penguin and it's all set up and it has all the components, components displayed. So let's go ahead and talk about them. The first thing you're going to see are these cards here and these are going to represent the five different colors on the map in the five different areas on the board. And each one of these cards is going to represent one of the symbols here of that specific color. And they're going to be uh, basically given to all the uh, explorer characters here, one of each of the colors and these explorers are going to be going around looking for them on the board while well, utilizing these dice here. These dice are actually going to be uh, movement dice. They'll let you go anywhere from one to four spaces as well as there's two symbols. This one here is the queen symbol and this one here is the movement symbol. The movement will let you go in any direction until you hit a wall or another player and this uh, queen symbol is actually going to be given to the queen so that she can go ahead and move or it'll be locked until the queen's phase in which she can utilize it for movement. This is the queen die and it goes from one to three spaces uh, and she's going to be using that on her turn. These are the different player lives that each player is going to get and basically the queen is going to win based on the number of players times two uh, as far as lives go. So what's going to end up happening is if there's uh, three players, one queen and two players, uh, it'll be two players times two, which is four. And once the queen gets four health tokens, that is going to end the game for the players and the queen will win the game. You're also going to get, of course, this board here that attaches to the bottom of the box here. And these little uh, inserts here, you can put all your different things, maybe any expansions that come with it, as well as, of course, the bottom of the board, which matches alongside the top of the board. There's also rules in uh, French, English, Netherlands, and Spanish. So if you have a uh, different speaking language uh, relatives or anything like that, you can go ahead and hand them this game. Uh, not only that, but you're also going to get these magnetized little characters here. There's four different colors, blue, green, red, and uh, yellow, as well as the queen's signature uh, color, which is teal. And there is the queen, which is going to be on the opposite side of the board. And it will actually be moving this little guy around. And normally in a hidden movement game, the players are trying to find the queen or the, the hidden Mr. X. But in this game, Pyramid of Penguin, you're actually going to be trying to uh, avoid the queen while she tries to search you out without knowing where you are while attempting to get to these spaces here. And it's pretty simple. So it's going to take place in turns. Every player is going to get one of each of these cards and each of these cards is going to have a different symbol on it. So maybe, for instance, a one player will have these five cards and they'll have a yellow axe, a purple crown here, this uh, monkey that is red, this uh, gray necklace, and then maybe this uh, green egg. And that'll be all five of their cards. And you can see it on the back here exactly what they need to be searching for. And whenever a player lands on those spaces, they're going to be able to flip over the card, reveal it to everybody, and then they're going to have be one step closer to victory. If a player reveals all of these cards, they're going to instantly win the game by getting to all the spots. However, every time you reveal one of these cards, that signifies to the queen where you are, and they're going to try and attempt to get to your space. What's going to start happening is the first thing is players are going to roll all the dice that aren't locked, and then they're going to go ahead and choose one of the die based on what they rolled. So in this case, they can choose a one, they can choose a two, they can choose a directional, or they can uh, choose another one. So really, it's just one, two, and a directional. This one here gets locked and goes to the queen, and uh, then the player gets to go ahead and choose. So we're playing with red here, and the queen doesn't get to see any of this. The queen doesn't doesn't get to see anything except for the die that is rolled the queen symbol. So uh, I could be going one, two, three, four, or this directional symbol for all they know. Uh, and the player who's red will go ahead and move, and they'll go ahead and use the directional symbol, letting 
then move all the way across. And then the next player is going to get to go. And the next player will have now a choice. In the beginning of after the first player's turn, the beginning of every turn, they will get to have the option of taking the die back that was locked, or dice, and then allowing that queen player to move that many spaces. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll take one back. And then the queen player will go ahead and move. Now, the queen doesn't know where anybody is, but they're going to be trying to find them. And as you can see, there's two starting points. You have the stairs over here and the sarcophagus. Whenever uh, the queen starts, she'll always be here. Whenever the players start, they'll always be here. However, if the queen catches any of the players, they're going to actually spawn at the sarcophagus. So, okay, now the next player is going to get to go. So we'll go ahead and say blue. Blue will roll all the dice. Another queen symbol given to the queen. Uh, and now a four here. So the blue can go, okay, I'm going to go one, two, uh, three, four. And if the, the blue player actually happened to have that yellow uh, amulet there or whatever, they can go ahead and turn that card over if they want. But that's going to give information to the queen. Now, if it's just a, a three-player game, then it'll be the queen's turn next. And the queen's going to get to go ahead and utilize any of the white die as movement and roll their black die. So this is a, a revealed movement. So it's three and four. But the queen doesn't know uh, where you guys are. She's just guessing. One, two, three, and four. Ooh, really close to blue. But she does not know that blue is right there. Um, unless blue played the card, then she would. After that, it'd be the next player's turn once again, and uh, this is still going to stay locked. It doesn't unlock until players take it back, and if all of these become locked, all the die become these little symbols here, then the queen is going to get to take an extra, just going to take the five turns, and have the dice will have to be re-rolled again. And that's, that's the basic idea of the game. When the queen captures somebody, boop, it'll just go on top of her. They'll have to let you know that, you have been, that they've been captured. They'll go to the sarcophagus and they'll continue their turn from there. Another thing to note is the queen can never capture anybody on any of the starting spaces of the game board. And also, whenever you capture somebody, they have to give you a life token of their from their life pool. Uh, whoever uh, wins the game is going to be the player who either accomplishes all of their cards or if the queen captures two times the number of players in life total. And that's basically the uh, style of the game, how you play it. So let's come up and talk about it. Okay, so do I have any caveats for uh, Pyramid of Penguin from Ice Cool or Brain Games? Uh, no, I don't. You basically know how to play the entire game. Why? Well, it's because it's a kid's game. And it is a kid's first hidden movement style style game. But this game is also great for adults. In fact, I haven't played it with a kid yet. I've just played it with my adult friends and family. They love it. They love it and for good reason. The ice cool aspect of the game is still intact and beautiful with the penguins and the great artwork and the colorful design. And not only that, but the ability to utilize the box as part of the game is pretty cool too. And you're just going to go ahead and stick this little thing inside the box and play it just like that. And there's not a huge amount of components, which is nice. And kids can learn how to play this game very, very quickly. In fact, all you have to do is, I would suggest probably eight or nine year olds, maybe even a couple of smarter, younger ones, if you got them in your family. And uh, then you can go ahead and start playing the game. What's interesting is it turns the hidden movement on its head by having the big bad guy trying to seek out the players, but they don't know where the players are necessarily. However, the players do give just enough information based on playing the cards face up to determine where they are to try and guess their area. Now, it's difficult, I suppose, for the players when they first start the game, but as they warm up and start realizing how to trick that penguin, then they're going to start being a little more devious. As I played the first couple times with the penguin, which is the character I like to play as, I started doing really well. I was doing really well really well at the start but the players started getting their thinking caps on and realizing how to trick me i'm not going to give you any, as many tips and tricks but what i can tell you i suppose is one or two if you want to if you want to have some knowledge here the first thing you want to do is maybe not start by coming over here and getting the basic ones because that's what the penguin is hoping for and maybe you want to try and go for something that's on the other side of the board to confuse them so that they're searching for you in different areas as soon as you reveal cards that is going to give them the knowledge that they need the queen to be able to find you and if they're close enough then you're in trouble never reveal anything if you're too close to the queen i would say four spaces is too close so be aware of that now that is pretty much the most knowledge. You, there's more things. You can write down the comments below if you want to help people out. But what's really great too is on the opposite side of the board, which I did not show, is you're going to have this big marker here and you're moving it around. Now, I originally thought that you were going to have some problems because you kind of figure out where players are based on their hand movement. But really, because this is such a small board and this is such a big space here, ooh, got one, you can actually go ahead and move it fairly easily without having to move your arm and people to figure out where you are. Uh, you can capture about three opponents on this little thing here at any given time. So if you try to go for that fourth one, it's likely that you're going to uh, end up having it dropped on the ground. My one small critique with the game, I would have to say, is the fact that 
if uh, you drop one of these little magnets, you're in for a world of hurt because you're gonna have to try and find it on the floor and they're not necessarily that easy to find. Overall, it's a fun game. It's a great family game. It's great for adults and it is a great Christmas theme. It came out just in time. Ice Cool Tool as well as this one are available for you to pick up if you're interested in and they are a lot of fun. This is a really nice hidden movement game and I would say it's the best hidden movement game I have ever played for children and younger teens. There are better ones that are going to come in as you get a little older like Fury of Dracula for those more advanced and more strategic gamers that want a little more depth to the game but for a quick and easy and a fun uh, game you're going to love this game. Pyramid of Penguin by Brain Games. I strongly suggest you take a look at it especially if you got kids this holiday season that like some hidden movement games. Game Unfiltered Gamer, seal of approval!